Uh, hello everyone, Feldus45 here, and I'm sorry there's no video games here, but um, I was planning on making a video last weekend, and it just didn't come together very well, so uh, this has been on the tutorial list for a while, and it's TrueCrypt, you might have heard of it. It is a free open source on-the-fly solution for encryption, and if you like it, make a donation. Uh, what it is, is it allows you to make a container to throw things in and locks it down. Um, I was recently traveling across the border and I heard that they can just go through your computer at any whim, so I didn't really have anything illegal or bad. Um, I just had things that you know were personal to me. Pictures of my families and friends um, and work documents. I mean, I archive all my passwords for everything on my computer and I wouldn't want the border agents or anyone who would ever have access to my computer through a network to have access to those files, so I kind of want to lock them down. Better safe than sorry. Um, but if you are someone who uh, pirates movies or something, <laughs> you can use this to save yourself from the intruding government if you're really suspicious. Um, anyway, let's show you how to use it. And I do apologize for the people who subscribe to me for Minecraft videos, but I didn't have time to do it. So uh, we'll boot that up. And what makes TrueCrypt better than for instance say WinRAR and putting a password on it. WinRAR can be really easily brute forced depending upon the complexity of your password um, but compared to TrueCrypt it's pretty weak in comparison so uh, let's start off by creating a volume or a container so we click that and we're gonna see this page which is a little confusing but we're not doing anything very advanced today I'll do future tutorials if uh, this video hits any amount of success but we're just gonna keep the option above at create an encrypted file container selected and click next and we're also gonna keep uh, the top one selected although hidden TrueCrypt volumes are really cool and really helpful if you do not want the volume to be found um, for instance if you're at the border um, of a state if they ask you to do something like open your trunk or uh, give me the keys to this safe or give me the password to your computer or this volume you have to do it otherwise you risk getting kicked out so the best way to avoid this is to just completely hide it divert their attention and be like oh well he doesn't have anything and this is even pretty hard to find but I'll do a future video on that uh, standard TrueCrypt volume is what we're doing today very very simple and here we actually want to do is click the select file button and just go to your desktop really doesn't matter um, if you're doing this to a flash drive you can also just save you a step there select anywhere this is just where the container is going to be safe for now you can move it around as much as you want um, you can also rename it at any time so don't feel stressful but we're just going to name it my secret stuff and we're going to click save click next and this is the level of encryption that you're going to be doing um, you really don't need to mess with this um, if you're really picky uh, you know what am I saying if you already know what serpent two fish AES is you probably don't need this video <laughs> so just go ahead and leave it at AES and click next and this is the part that might affect some of the later steps because if you make a file that is for instance 40 gigabytes it's gonna have to create that partition as an NTFS or something so it can contain it but most partitions uh, for documents files and I guess pictures um, th they're going to be fairly small so you always want to give yourself a little more space than what you need so if I have um, let's say I only have 10 megabytes of files I should do probably 20 um, and keep in mind that this container will be since it's not hidden it's going to be known in your computer that you have a 20 megabyte file so if I did something like 20 gigabytes um, there's going to be 20 gigabytes on my computer that's completely taken up even if I only have a few documents in there so use only what you need and if someone sees a 20 gigabyte file they're going to be like okay that's obviously a volume because it, d it doesn't open up with anything so only use what you need space it out um, keep it safe so let's say I do have 10 megabytes of documents and stuff like that we're just going to go 20 megabytes or kilobytes would even good but you know what yeah let's let's lower that nope we're not gonna too lazy <laughs> click next and this is uh, where we kinda get to be creative 
we get to type in our password. Oops. And you know, I think I have a macro on my keyboard for this. I do. Bill Cosby rocks my socks. I use this for a lot of tutorials. Um, so type in whatever password you want and do try to make it a little more complex than Bill Cosby rocks my socks. Try to include special characters like uh, equals and money signs and uh, pretty much a lot of shift characters just because that will make it a little harder to brute force. Um, this would probably only take a week tops and a really nice CPU to brute force um, with a very simple array plugin. Uh, so try to make it very complex. Uh, make sure you can remember it, uh, <laughs> depending upon how important your data really is uh, and who you're dealing with. So uncheck that, and we're going to you make it even more hard to crack. So I'm going to check Use Key Files, and then we can use this button. Once we click that, it brings up this, and this looks kind of confusing, but all we're going to use in this tutorial is the Add Files. Um, so I haven't really explained what key files are. Uh, key files are just a file that is a key. Okay, so you probably already gathered that, but uh, essentially to open this volume up, we need the key file or key files. So you can use more than one, and I'm going to use all three. So if I were to put this key file in Dropbox, this key file on a flash drive, and this key file I emailed to the location I'm going to, um, that would be a very secure way to do this because not one person could easily get into this. They'd need to brute force the entire volume and then they would need to get all of my key files. And we don't want to tape the key to the door we're trying to get into, so don't try to keep don't keep these on the uh, computer that has the volume, but you can uh, if it's fairly you're dealing with someone who doesn't really know what they're doing. Um, but let's pretend I'm a paranoid, schizophrenic, the government's trying to kill me kind of person. So I'm just going to highlight all those and click open. And it puts them all in there. It doesn't really matter which order they're in, but it does matter that we do not modify these files ever. Otherwise, it's going to change them. We shouldn't change their name. We shouldn't change their makeup. We shouldn't edit them. Um, just leave them as is and you can use anything I'm using images here you could use an icon which is I guess also an image um, you could use an mp3 a document you could even use another volume It really doesn't matter what you use uh, but make sure that it's not changing and it stays the same so don't use like a log file or something for a program that's going to be rewritten because otherwise you'll never get in uh, so once you have your files or file click OK and you don't need to use key files if you really don't need that. Remember that's just if you think the government's trying to kill you. Uh, click next and it's gonna say your password sucks I hate you use a longer password um, even though it's a bunch of characters just say yes or if you're really paranoid go ahead and make another one and it suggests using FAT if you do have a big um, uh, volume it's gonna suggest probably NTFS and this random pool is, it just shows you how secure this is going to be. It's uh, drawing from a, a bunch of variables from my computer, even even the mouse movements. So that's pretty cool, but not really too useful uh, for me. So we're just going to click Format. And if you created a big volume, that might take a while. For instance, like a couple gigs, it's going to have to write that entire file to your hard drive. So it could take a while. And mine was really quick because it's only 20 megs. So I'll say OK. And you can make drives all day. You can just keep going forward. But I'm just going to click Cancel. Now what? We have my secret stuff on my desktop. And I don't know what to do with it. Well, we got to put stuff in it. So we're going to need to mount it. And I'll show you how to do that. And actually, you know what? I'll show you how to hide it a little better. Um, my secret stuff is kind of obvious. I mean, look, I'm going to know this is an archive just by the name and it's just a file. <laughs> it's kind of obvious. So what we're going to do is rename this to accounting. Uh, spreadsheets can often get pretty big, so it's kind of convincing that it's 20 megs. And it doesn't really look like an accounting document. Um, 
So I think a spreadsheet would be XLS. Is the new ones? Oh no. I did XLX. Uh, yes. <laughs> Do not listen to it. Uh, but obviously, if you try to open it, it's probably going to try and open. I think that's Open Office, but it's not going to work. And it doesn't really matter what file extension you give it. So it thinks it's a spreadsheet. That's awesome. Let's uh, go back to our TrueCrypt volume, and you can tuck this in with your other documents, and it should blend in, but if it's a very large file, people are going to be like, hmm, uh, accounting file that is 3 gigabytes in size, <laughs> 3,000 megabytes, they're not going to fall for it, so uh, try to make it obvious and believable, uh, whatever you decide to name it. You could even name it as a video file or something, but anyway, be creative. Um, we want to mount it now so we can put things in it, but we go to my computer we see that I'm using a lot of drives here the C D E F G H I if I had my iPod and my phone plugged in and a couple SD cards um, the list would go on pretty pretty far and so we don't really want to go um, too far up just in case it's very unlikely that you'll hit these drive numbers and they'll cause a conflict but I like to be safe so just go to like U or something um, I think if you still have a floppy drive those start around here, a zip drive or something, but that's prehistoric technology by now. Um, so now we can use this bottom panel, and we want to select our file, which is on our desktop, and I called it accounting, so it should be, there it is, yep, and it thinks it's a uh, Excel sheet, so that's cool, and so now what? we have to mount it so with our selected drive we click mount and it asks us for this stuff well I already know my macro Bill Cosby rocks my socks uh, use key files we click the key files because I know it use key files and we click add files we're gonna find the uh, files we need and it doesn't matter which order they're put in TrueCrypt knows that okay these are the files that I need to open this uh, container click OK and then click OK again and if all goes well we should see our drive pop up right here and open it up it's it's empty and you might notice that it's 19.6 megabytes so that's why it's a good idea to always give yourself a little bit of room to grow because uh, depending upon the file structure Windows or Mac is going to take some of that uh, so open it up, and I don't really have anything to put in here, so I'm just going to do a document of, let's see, people I, wait, people I have a crush on. <laughs> open it up, and we're going to say Bill Cosby, Bill Kisby. I'm wasting so much time on this. Um, let's say... Neil deGrasse and that fat chick down the road and we're gonna save that and you don't have to create the file in there um, see if I have this folder anywhere else on my computer I could just, oop it's still in there, I copied it I could just drag it in and uh, there it is so you can drag in all your folders and files and it should show some of the space um, being taken up but obviously this is <laughs> one kilobyte so it's not really going to register that um, so now what do you do you can't just leave it there um, you need to dismount it so all you need to do is click dismount and it's gone but it's still in here so there it is that is uh, how you use TrueCrypt, and again, if you want to make a donation to the developer, I'm sure he'd greatly appreciate it. It's an absolutely free program. Um, it's, it's just great. A lot of people are protecting their things from unwanted eyes, and I'd, I recommend it any day. But to open your accounting file, quote, all you need to do is go through the same steps, select it as a file you want to mount, use the key files and your password, and you're in and you can put that on a flash drive or something or email it, it really doesn't matter 
So thanks for watching, guys, and I will get you guys some fresh content in the coming week.